this is the true standard of beauty. Perfection, technology, practicality, luxury. Oh wait, wrong car. Meet the Rat Rod, a rebellious prime example of a public protest art, built for the very purpose of head turning. Part of the feature in a Rat Rod is no digital gauges, rusty, exposure, 1964 and prior, they're gritty. Design in a chaotic fashion. There's no practicality. Hi, this is Corbin Randall. And this is Jakota Winkle. This is the ugly beauty of rat rod. publicly resist standard beauty in an aesthetically violent manner, establishing ugly as beautiful. After many failed car shows and many weeks of searching, Dakota and I finally found the rat rod of all rat rods. This rat rod was absolutely It was a head turner. And the owner was actually willing to do an interview. Is this the original paint on it too? Yeah. Oh, okay. We made it like that. That's cool. I like it. We painted it 12 different colors and sent it through it. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. It's intentionally destructive. It is intentionally chaotic. From every design aspect, it is aimed at one goal, and that is resisting the standard beauty of today. During our research, we found Ideas of Ugly by Robert Martin Adams which takes a look at ugliness in the light of a different perception. Adam iterates, without beauty, there would be no ugly. Ugliness is arbitrary due to the fact that what is ugly and beautiful are forever changing and decided by humans. Therefore, nothing is completely ugly or beautiful. Ugly works of art can display originality and creativity that can push viewers to intellectually think and discuss untraditional works of art, therefore becoming more valuable in the sense of aesthetics than beautiful art. This source allows the comparison of rat rods to what people consider as beautiful pieces of art and shows less aesthetically pleasing pieces to inspire more intellectual conversations. Do you find this as beautiful? Do you think this rat rod is beautiful? Does this rat rod appear beautiful? Is this rat rod beautiful? Is this rat rod beautiful? Do you find this beautiful? Is this beautiful? Do you find this as beautiful? Do you find this beautiful? Was that beautiful? Uh, yeah. Not as beautiful as my truck, but yeah. Yes. Yes. I like the patino on it. Probably. Absolutely. No, no question about it. it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's way, yeah, like the patina color, the rust that gives it makes it look really nice. We'll definitely turn heads. It's uh, beautiful in its own light. So some it might be ugly, but to others it might be perfect. So yeah, I like it. Yeah. No. Why is it not beautiful? Because it is not, it's not refined. No. And why would you say it's not beautiful? It's old. Yes. And what about it is most beautiful? It's just old school. You don't see it anymore. Yeah, I would say so. And what about it is most beautiful? The age. I like old school. 
Yes, it is beautiful. I like it. What about it do you find most beautiful? It's, cl it's a classic and it's different, man. It's unique. Seriously. This is the sexiest thing I've seen so far. Um, it is a very beautiful car because look, just the essence of how old it is and how it's still in this good condition is wonderful. Maybe beautiful in a funky kind of way? Yes. In its own way, yes. Do you find this beautiful? I do, absolutely. <laughs> All right. I did find it beautiful. Yes. No. No? Why not? Because it's black. I don't, personally. Is this beautiful? Yes. Yeah, it's yes. unique. That's a classic. Do you find this beautiful? Very. That is how you open your car. <laughs> So, Dakota, how long have we been looking for one of these? Oh, a million years, about just about a million years. Yeah, and we've been to about eight shows. We have finally found the violent beast. <laughs> I don't think, is this a new experience? <laughs> Go! Good gosh. Absolutely perfect. You see the rest? So remember one thing we mentioned about rat rods, lack of technology? Look at this. All analog right here. The interior on this one is actually very bare. He chose to keep it like that. That's how you adjust the mirror located right there. Leather interior to par with the rust. This is a cup holder. Once again, this is how you open the door, a screwdriver. And of course, you got your little shade here. All right, hello guys, I am Corbin Randall and I'm with Carson. Carson, nice to meet you, Carson. Nice to meet you. Carson here, he has built this beast at K-Town Throwdown Meet at Texas Motor Speedway. What a good place for this meet. Starting off with just a few statistics, how much horsepower does this have? Yeah, we're running about 325 to 328 stock Chevy motor. What prompted you to make a rat rod. Uh, the beauty of them, and you, you can look like crap, and you don't care what you know what people think, and you get to get in and do donuts, not a fifty thousand dollar car you have. So you you had the option, like you could have put more money to like fix up the paint, but you left it intentionally rusty. Correct. Um, and that was because of looks and characteristics. What characteristics are you attempting to put in the hearts of uh, the viewers? Old school and awesome looking. Do you enjoy the attention? I very much enjoy the attention. J talking about something I love to do, it's something great. We can see that it's extremely loud. Yeah. Uh, are you like in any way intimidating the viewers? Intimidating other cars. Most I can see there's absolutely like a limited technology in this vehicle. Yeah. And you said you were trying to resist like other cars. Yeah. So is this in any way Resisting the standards and beauty. No, completely. This is so beautiful. It's honestly. What I mean by that is traditional standards and beauty, like technology, perfection. That's what I mean. Like you're you're resisting the modern like standards. Correct. Correct. Making this vehicle all over again. Would you do anything differently? Uh, if anything differently, I would put a different engine in it. Maybe a fuel injected, you know, just a bigger motor to more intimidate more people. And uh, it's not mostly a personal preference of what you want, what you want it to look like. Do you have an emotional connection to this car? I mean, yeah. Me and my dad built it when we were uh, young, and it's just memories you have. And that's something that the viewer actually can't see. So that that little perspective is uh, silenced from the viewer. That's actually really interesting because, like, as a viewer, you can, you only can take what the art is. You can't take it from the artist's perspective. I really enjoy this car. Thank you so much for bringing it out. Thank you so much for your time. How does this rat rod make you feel? Excited. Uh, Excited. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, real nice. I mean, it brings me back to old school. How does this car make you feel in general? Well, the way I feel whenever I see one of these, I get kind of scared because the noise level on these things is extreme. So once you see one of these, blow your windows up, people. So what about it do you think is this like most appealing feature and its most ugly feature? I'd say the engine's the most appealing, and the most ugly is probably the paint. How does this make you feel? Broke. 
impressed. I'm usually impressed when people put a lot of work into stuff like this. Uh, kind of like adrenaline. What emotions does it draw? Lust. Lustful. How does it make you feel? It feels like someone interesting drives it. How does it make you feel? Good that there's still old things like this in the world. Like, man, that's an old ass car. It's fast. How does it make you feel? Uh, like a badass. <laughs> school. My bad. Yeah, you can, no, you can say it. Just edit it. <laughs> it's a badass ride, man. I would drive that every day, daily drive if I could. It makes me want to steal it, honestly. <laughs> But at the same time, if I was to see this on the road, I'd be fucking terrified. <laughs> Emotional because I don't have it. <laughs> How does this make you feel? Intrigued, interested, entertained. What emotions does it create? Positive emotions because it's different and weird and funky, kind of. <sighs> How does it make you feel? Excited, tough. I think that it's creative and a lot of time and effort went into coming up with all the different ways to use different parts that don't typically go into a car. What emotions does it bring? Well, it's loud, and so obviously kind of a little bit of an excitement there. All right, Grayson. So how does this make you feel? <laughs> I think he liked it. How did it make you feel? Uh, it made me feel excited I would like to ride in that car. <laughs> How does it make you feel? I love found objects and it makes me feel like it's being reused, so it makes me feel good. How does it make you feel? Sad. Sad? And why does it make you feel sad? Because it's not beautiful. <laughs> All right, thank you. High five. <laughs> Honestly, it reminds me of when I was little and my dad fixed cars. So kind of like nostalgic? Yes, more nostalgic. Hey guys, this is Dakota. What's so, up? My name is Greg Winkle. Do you think rat rods are beautiful? Sure. Why might you say that? Because they're just a piece of art, you know? You, why would you say they're a piece of art, if I may ask? Because you have things that are old, that have lived out the years in, in a field that people take and they restorate, you know, make them run again. They're just beautiful. What emotions come in mind when you actually see a rat right I feel exhilarated because of the, the power most of them have. Do you think decorating a rat rod makes a rat rod unique? Yeah, minds? people take what they have around the house, or put different things on there to make it their own special car, you know? I mean, a lot of people, they take cars like that and they leave branches growing out of them. They just do cool stuff to them, you know? And all originality for a car that's been sitting up for 50 years, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your time. No problem. Have a good day. <laughs> According to The Abuse of Beauty by Danto author Coleman, a great deal has been said about these artists searching for ugly instead of consoling us with beauty. They forget that every new work of creative design is ugly until it is beautiful. That we usually apply the word beautiful to those works of art in which familiarity has enabled us to grasp the unity easily. The perception of these artworks as ugly was, in effect, the projection onto them of a mental confusion that a course in aesthetic education would remove. No one could count their art as ugly, which is the operative thought in Fry's dictum that things would be perceived as ugly until they are perceived as beautiful. The narrative of aesthetic redemption assures us that sooner or later we will see all arts as beautiful, however ugly it appears at first. It is a misrepresentation of art to see it as always necessarily concerned with the creation and appreciation of beauty. Do you miss me anymore? No. Anymore? No.